Hello everybody. Um, in this video, we're gonna complete uh, talking about the uh, graphical integration. In the previous video, we talked about the trapezoidal rule. We understood the basics of the method and the uh, the wh why the equations are, are put this way. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about one other method, which is kind of more accurate than the trapezoidal rule in many cases, uh, which is the Simpson's rule. The Simpson's rule assumes that the spacing between the points, we have like here three points, we assume that the three points are uh, equidistant, which means that the distance between the first and the second uh, is equal to the distance between the second and the third, which is h. This is h and this is h. And we assume that this is y1 uh, corresponds to y1, this a x corresponds to y2, this x corresponds to y3. So we have the three points. Um, the uh, main difference between the Simpson's rule and the trapezoidal rule is that uh, trapezoidal rule assumes that this line between these two points is a straight line and that's why we use the, the area of a trapezium to describe this or calculate this area. Um, however, Simpson's rule does not assume that or, or does this assumption. Uh, however, it assumes that the uh, relation uh, between y and x is a curve uh, equation, which is a parabolic shape. Um, and it is uh, described mathematically as ax squared plus bx plus c. And by doing this, we assume that this, this, and this, the three points, uh, satisfy this equation. Um, and, and this is the reason the Simpson's rule is more accurate than the trapezoidal rule. Um, uh, we can substitute to the three points in the equation, and by doing this, we can get uh, y1 uh, equals this, y2 equals this, and y3 equals this. We just uh, substitute the, the three points, it's just uh, direct substitution. Um, uh, it's it's not, nothing difficult. Um, and the next point is that we need to uh, put a and b and c as a function of the variables that we know or the parameters that we know. All what we know are the tabulated data of h uh, and y. So I know um, the value of x and y for this point, the x and y for this point, and for this point. So we know we know the y1, y2, y3, and the value of h. But I don't know a and b and c. So by solving these three equations together, it's very simple as well. You can uh, do it manually, but at the end of the day, you will get uh, the these equations. So the first is uh, 2a h squared equals this. I, I just want you to keep this in mind because we will come back to it later, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it in this in this shape. Um, and we can get a as one over two h squared multiplied by this bracket. Um, b can be uh, found as as this, and c is is, is found to be equal to y two. So uh, now let's see when we calculate the area, what we will get. So when we calculate the area, we will find that the integration of f of x dx from negative h to h equals a integration of ax squared plus bx plus c, which will be a uh, multiplied by x bar 3 over 3 plus b multiplied by x bar 2 over 2 plus c multiplied by x. And these all are from negative h to h. Uh, by substitution, we'll find that this term will be uh, will end up to be zero because it's going to be h squared minus h squared. So this is going to be zero. So what we will end up with is two over three a h power three uh, because it's going to be two h power three uh, over three multiplied by a, and this is going to be two h multiplied by c. <coughs> And then we can rewrite this equation or this term to be h over 3 multiplied by 2a h squared. And we know 2a h squared, and that's why I kept this in this shape. So we can put y1 plus y3 minus 2y2 uh, instead of this term. And then we will have the equation and, and c equals 2y2. So this is going to be the equation, which is totally function of the parameters that we know. Um, and by rearranging the equation and taking y2, uh, putting y2 inside the bracket and getting common, fac uh, common factors and all these uh, mathematical things, we will end up with this shape, which is h over 3 multiplied by y1 plus y3 plus 4y2. So this is the, the equation that we're going to use. I, I wanted to go through the uh, derivation or the... Uh, um, equations uh, that, that led us to this equation just to understand how we got this equation but this this is going to be the equation that we're going to substitute to get the area it's, it's a simple equation it's, it's nothing difficult uh, 
now let's see if we have many points so what we mentioned before was like this part of the of the curve but if we have many points here I have here nine points so what we, we will do is similar to what we did in the trapezoidal rule is we're gonna get areas and then add them together to get the whole area um, and the uh, to do this we have to make sure that or, or to keep in mind that we we calculate the area of two intervals together so I calculate this this area together so I have to have even number of uh, small areas or to have odd number of points so I, I calculate this as single area this a single area this a single area and this single area and this might be one of the uh, drawbacks or the limitations of uh, the Simpsons rule is that I cannot apply for um, uh, for even number of points um, so uh, what I'm gonna do is to apply the same equation that we mentioned in the previous slide on each one of these areas so the first area is gonna be function of y1 y2 and y3 a, a2 is gonna be function of y3 y4 and y5 and so on until we calculate the uh, all the areas and to get the sum of or, or the total area or the value of the area under the curve we will add all these small areas together which is gonna be y1 uh, h over 3 multiplied by y1 and then I have 2 y2, y3 because it's available twice and y5 and y7 both each one of them is is uh, is present twice and only y1 and y9 are gonna be present once and all the even y's will be multiplied by 4 so to have a general form it's gonna be like this or I'd like to or I, I personally like this shape which is y1 h over 3 multiplied by y1 plus yn plus 4 multiplied by the sum of the even y's plus 2 multiplied by the sum of the odd y's so this is how we we got to to uh, find the the equations that we use to calculate the areas using the Simpson's rule these forms are not going to be of interest to us when we are using Microsoft Excel because we are going to uh, use these these points uh, or these equations. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solve one equation or one example using Microsoft Excel to get the area using Samson's rule, and I'm going to compare compare the Samson's rule and the trapezoidal rule because it's important to understand. Uh, that, that in, in some cases it's it's not easy to uh, or it's, it's not right to use the trapezoidal rule because it's gonna develop a lot of errors anyway so this is a pizza tube example exactly like the one that we mentioned in the previous uh, video I'm, I'm adding more points here just to uh, be easy for us to use the Simpsons rule because we cannot use it for the uh, small number of points that we mentioned in the previous case so what, I, what I'm gonna do is um, in case you don't understand what I'm doing, just please watch the previous video. I, I discussed it in, in details. So I'm going to calculate the f of r, which is 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by r multiplied by um, v. Um, and this is f of r. And to get the q, I'm going to apply the Simpson's rule. One thing to keep in mind or to, to, uh, yeah, to keep in mind is that uh, I start my calculations at y3 which is the third point so in case you, you are kind of confused about the points so I'm gonna put point number so it's gonna be one two so you don't get confused about the uh, the number of points that we are using so uh, I'm just uh, doing the formatting so don't, don't worry about what I'm doing anyway so what we have here is that we are gonna start at point number three I can highlight them just to prevent any confusion that might happen so I'm I'm interested or, or the the cells that I'm doing calculations in are these cells uh, and, and this is how the Simpsons rule work and this might be one thing that makes it kind of I don't I don't see it very confusing but it might be confusing to to do these calculations anyway so the equation what we we're doing is um, uh, h over 3 which is this minus this which is the spacing between the points over 3 multiplied by the first y plus the second y plus 4 multiplied by I mean the third plus 4 multiplied by the second and I'm gonna repeat this equation here and here uh, you, you can copy and paste um, and again I'm doing it for y3 y5 y7 and y9 it's only the 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 odd, odd uh, cell that I didn't use is the first one 
but I used T579 until whatever the number of cells. You can copy and paste, or I, what I suggest is to drag two cells, the empty and the filled one. So it's gonna repeat that everything that you did, uh, one empty and the, then one with the formula, one empty and then one with the formula, and so on. And finally, you have to just uh, get the sum of all these points together, and this is gonna be the flow rate of the water in the pipe in meter cube per second. So it's kind of simple. Um, I, I don't see it confusing. Again, the main uh, limitation is the number of points. If you have 14 points, then you cannot do this. Or you can do this for the 13 points and then do the last area with the trapezoidal if, if this is something that you can, uh, you can do to minimize the errors. Um, now let's see if we can if we need to compare the trapezoidal rule and the Simpson's rule and see which one is uh, or, or how much error will develop in case of uh, using the trapezoidal rule. Uh, so we mentioned before that the main problem with the trapezoidal rule is that it assumes that the the the, the, the uh, relation between the uh, lines between the points is a uh, straight line. Uh, and, and that's why I use this curvy relation just to show that we have many curves here and then I'd expect that trapezoidal is not gonna be, the, gonna be the best thing to use. So I'm gonna repeat what I did last time. I'm gonna get the middle base by height, which is this plus this divided by two multiplied by the height, which is this minus this. Again, I'm gonna do this for all of them and get the sum which is 676.58. So this is what I'm get, getting, gonna get when using the trapezoidal rule. When I'm using the Simpsons rule, I'm gonna start with point number three and then I'm gonna do the um, H minus the three, which is this minus this uh, divided by three multiplied by the last plus the first plus four multiplied by the second. And again, what I did last time, I'm gonna uh, do that. Uh, before we get the sum, I just want to uh, the the uh, audiences to kind of get a feeling of what we have here compared to what we have here. So this is the area from point zero or from this point to this point in trapezoidal. It's 24, and Simpsons is 28. So this area under the curve in this in this range is calculated by Simpsons to be 28 and by trapezoidal to be 24. So we have have a big difference. The second part is assumed or, or calcul calculated to be 23.7 and here 25.8. So there is a lot of error difference here. This is going to be 14.9 and this is 16.3. So I'm expecting a lot of error between these two. So what I found that this is the area under the curve using the Simpsons rule is found to be 86.97, which is almost 87. And this is 76. So uh, to calculate the error, I'm gonna get the difference and divide this by the right value or the more accurate value. So I have almost 12% error when using the Simpsons or uh, the trapezoidal rule because of the lot of curves that are uh, available in this system. So uh, in, in such case, trapezoidal is not a reliable method that you can use. So it's it's important point that you need to keep in mind in case of doing the calculations. I, I personally prefer to use Simpson's rule because it's more accurate. And, and at the end of the day, you're not doing any calculations manually. It's just a formula that you put and it's doing all the calculations automatically. So um, I hope that this helps and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.